after a year's worth of training initiated to the sixth level or grand druid position of witchcraft, I sat on a council of 13 people that take orders only from the Rothschild Tribunal in London, which they claim they take their orders directly from Lucifer. And that's why they reside. Somebody's asking me if some of the Rothschilds live in California. Not those directly related to the tribunal. They won't leave England. Some live in France, but they always come over to England because they believe that England is the place that Lucifer is most fluent and can speak to them more in person than he could anywhere else. And from talking to Christians in England, they estimate there's only 2% of the population are Christians in the uh, Great Britain country. So uh, they have quite a fluent time over there. In fact, some friends of mine just brought pictures back of where they're building homes with broomstick poles coming out of the chimney for the witch spirits to land on to bless their homes. These aren't ignorant people. These are the new million dollar mansions that are going up. Not just a superstition. The country has really gone back to witchcraft. It was originally total witchcraft. So uh, this is the atmosphere I came out of. I was saved in Labor Day of 72 in San Antonio to a movie, The Crossing the Switchblade, a uh, coffee house ministry that belonged to a Baptist church there, and then later deliverance through that Baptist church. I've been ministering with people in the occult. And uh, in the last year, my main ministry has been to Christians playing with the occult. And uh, we're going to demonstrate that in a minute here. But uh, this is what our ministry outlook has been. We just, in uh, September, went to Minneapolis, St. Paul area, which is where the occult owns one of their Bible colleges, their printing company, we will. And uh, through Christians giving, we bought 10,000 of the broken crosses to distribute free there. We went there and we worked for two weeks there through the state fair and other things that was going on and had a hotline set up for them to call in and they knew we were coming and they canceled their convention and it was booked close to a half a million people were scheduled to appear at their convention and they can't cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. And the story that the best we could get was they were too afraid that this broken cross would get in their hands since it has been the leading instrument for stopping people in joining and getting those that were in. And uh, they called the convention, the Aquarian Arts Festival, completely off. First time it's been done so in years. And uh, we're going back there. In fact, Friday and Saturday, we're going back for five meetings in the prayer force. The people who put the uh, second $100,000 on my head came out of Minneapolis because of the last time we were up there. So uh, be in prayer for my safety while we're up there. I would really appreciate your prayer. <laughs> it was kind of hairy the last time we were up there. But this is my background, and uh, I want to say one thing before we start here for those that are newcomers. The organization that I came out of is a cult in religion, not in purpose. Its purpose is political and financial power, complete world rule through finance, which they believe would control the political atmosphere. It's been called by many people the Illuminati, which is called Mariah. In the United States, it's called the Council of Foreign Relations. It has many, many names wherever you go. I met Dr. Rasmussen because he had come across it through the Masons. I've met people who have come across it through political things, through financial and banking things. And wherever people have seen it, they have thought that's exactly what it was. It was either in one of those realms. I came out of a realm where I knew better. I came off of a council that was in charge of dishing money out and political orders. In my area, I had 5,000 COVID. That meant I had 65,000 priests and priestesses. That wasn't the congregation. That was just the ministers. I saw a, a movie by Hal Lindsey on the occult where he said he believed there were 5,000 witches in the United States. There are 25,000 witches in Los Angeles City alone. So he was way under, way under short. From the statistics that we are seeing right now, it is the fastest growing religion in the United States and definitely in the world. And the reason it is doing this is because it has its financial power, and it's because the Christians, most of them, do not know their word and therefore are afraid of it, and therefore do not witness to the people that are in it. And uh, we have not had much success in the last couple of years because they have stepped up the death threats within the occult for people leaving. It's like a Berlin Wall. And the people were afraid to come out when we were there. We were in a meeting one night where we had over... 5,000 people in one meeting. In that meeting, 1,500 of them were initiated priests and priestesses of witchcraft that had attended the meeting. And hundreds came up and told ministers, myself and my wife later, they would come out if we could guarantee them a safe place to go until they were strong enough to be on their own. We didn't have such a place. We're trying to prepare such a place now. 
And if you're interested in helping in such a place, get with Dr. Rasmussen and he comes back from this trip, communicate with him your bazaar on this, since he will be one of the few people who will know where this place is and be able to send people to it. It will be completely hidden and secret. We had one once before in Phoenix, and three people were killed there one night because some pastors interfered with the security of the place, and uh, the occult was watching, and they came in and machine gunned to death three girls and wounded the worker. The girls were ages 15 to 18. They do not play games, and this is why we tell the young people, don't go, because they'll tell you to come in, it's nice, it's loving, it's a brotherhood, and you get in, and once you're initiated, you find out, It'll cost them $10,000 if you try to leave, but they'll send it. That's the minimum bounty they put on anybody's head getting out, and they don't care how young they are. So it's not a game. It's a real world out there. So uh, that's some quick background, a few words to the young people, how this takes like we did this morning, the questions and answers. Many of you were here, and I know you have questions and answers from this morning's service. Okay? Since you asked that question, I wanted to do something this morning I forgot. If you will take out some pencil and paper, a few of you, I'm going to give you some facts. Now, we hear a lot of, of things rolled out on things, but I want to give you facts so that when you come up to somebody, especially just young people fooling with rock music, you'll have some facts. Now, I want to say one thing before we get started. Young people have been running all over saying hi, they're friendly to me. They're going to want to lynch me when this is over. But young pe people, you'll just have to understand that I came out of a world that I saw something you don't see when you turn on the radio. Parents, if you're letting to compromise with your young people, them having rock music in your home, which you as Christian parents own and are responsible to the Lord for, then you're wrong. And I recommend you go home right now and throw it in the trash can immediately. And this is the reason why. You see groups up on the television and on the, you hear them on the radio and in concert and stuff, and you, know, you don't see the behind the scenes. Now here's one fact. Zodiac Productions, the leading Texas publication. It's changed its name now, but it was Zodiac Productions when I was with it. I was supposedly the owner of it. The occult owned it. And it was the leading source of concerts in Texas. Its office was in San Antonio. Because I was supposedly the owner, I met most of the groups in existence then. There are a few that have come out since then, but it's still the same type of thing. Almost all of them believe openly in the occult in one way or the other. Most are into Satanism. Now, how many Christians and young people remember from Billy Jack, One Tin Soldier, the song? A few of you? Okay. The group you heard on the radio called Original Cast. They always said it was done by the Original Cast. The name of the group that was the Original Cast is Coven. It was led by Tom Laughlin's daughter. Tom Laughlin played Billy Jack, his wife, his son, David, who produced it, and both his daughters are into Satanism. In fact, they produced the only eight-track out on a complete Satanist step-by-step -step ceremony done by COVID. And that's the group who did One Tin Soldier. And I've seen all of the movies except the new one that's coming out, and every one of the Billy Jack movies are anti-Christian, pro-occult. The trial of Billy Jack dealt with demons and had more ceremonies of witchcraft and Satanism in, in it than it had anything about a trial of Billy Jack. And it was constant step-by-step -step ceremonies. It was reincarnation. Familiar spirits entered his body in the first Billy Jack and spoke to him, if you remember. Over and over, it came through. Now, that's one group. Rolling Stone. Mick Jagger has told openly, over and over on television, I don't know where our Christian young people were when it was going on, that when he was in jail before the Stones was ever formed, he sold his soul to the devil. That's impossible, but he did it in it. He sold his soul to the devil to become the leading rock group in the nation, plus get out of prison. He is the leading rock group in the nation, in the world. He has wrote songs praising the devil. And I know the devil gave it to him because the devil always thinks on himself. And in one song that Jagger wrote, he said, it's not that I fool you who I am. Everybody knows who the devil is. It's the nature of my game that's confusing you. And this is the way it is with Satan. See, we've got a little set of rules that Satan's supposed to obey, but he don't obey it. It's like the Illuminati. They own countries. They don't pick sides in a war. They cause a war and put both countries against each other, even though both countries belong to them. They don't have sides. They have a purpose. Satan has every religion except that which is under the blood of Jesus. That's where the confusion of the game is. We try to rationalize things good or bad, and we can't do that. We rationalize things Jesus 
or the devil. 